you are an up-and-coming entrepreneur with more than just a vision to provide a service or sell a product, or you could just be sitting with a brilliant idea that could potentially create solutions and cater to a market in need, then today is tailored for you. Welcome to the Business and Finance Edition of the NetBank YouthX Live Events. My name is Pam Lamtanga, and I am your host. If this is your first time joining us, fasten your seatbelt because NetBank YouthX is about to help you unlock your full potential. As we all know, youth unemployment is at an all-time high and this is NetBank's way of helping aid this problem and bring about change. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. YouthX exists so that you and me can have access to free tools that allow us to upskill ourselves and connect to like-minded individuals, including our change makers, who we aspire to be like one day. I'm talking about the likes of Shoma Josie, Amanda Dlamini, Candice Chira, Rivom Thari, Rich Mnisi, and Theo Baloy, who are all seasoned changemakers dedicated to making their mark in South Africa. On today's installment, we explore the world of business and finance, and, that, and this is what you can expect. We will kick things off with TalkX, which will be led by our changemaker for business and finance, Theo Baloy, followed by our money talks with NetBank's head of segment design and development, Lance Vuma, and finally close things off with a panel with our local changemaker, Usibu Mabena, our financial expert, Lance Vuma, Theo Baloy, and with we facilitated by Ayabonga Tawe. During each segment, please do feel free to interact by asking questions and keep it unlocked to the YouthX platform. We have loads in store for you guys, including cash prizes, networking opportunities, and the hottest ticket in town, the YouthX Summit. So get in there. So NetBank is committed to equipping you with what you need to ensuring that you provide solutions and answers that exactly are tailored to you. So that is why I would highly recommend that you go on the site and vote on the polls. Plus, it's one of the easy ways for you to earn points and win a lot of prizes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> After leaving his job as a chartered accountant abroad, he started his business in his uncle's house. Today, that business has become a household name that is responsible for sustainable job creation and reigniting hope in African people. Introducing the founder of Batu and NetBank's changemaker for business and finance, Theo Baloy, who will be sharing his journey with us and letting you in on how you can unlock your full potential with NetBank YouthX and more. Take a look. Hi everyone, my name is Theo Baloyi. I'm the founder of Africa's premium sneaker brand, Bar2. And today, I wanna talk to you about maximizing opportunities. Before I start about that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I matriculated in 2008 and came to Johannesburg and to live in Alexandra with my uncle to further my studies in accounting. And the way I started that was that I come from a background that was not so privileged. My dad decided to, to sell his car to fund my tuition. For me, that was an opportunity for me to start and to fuel my dreams. And when I got to varsity, because I understood where I was coming from, living with my uncle in Alexandra because my parents didn't have enough funds to fund for my tuition and pay for my accommodation, I understood my background. I decided to maximize my opportunity to study and to study become accounting sciences by literally putting everything else that I've got into this opportunity of fueling my dreams. When I got to varsity, I studied so hard that I got a 100% bursary for my tuition. And when I was doing my undergrad in accounting sciences, myself and my best mate, Andrew Lally, we decided to start a perfume business to really help fund our lifestyle at the time, or to also an extra cash as a form of allowance. And what I did then is that I told my parents not to send me any allowance because I have got this business to fund. Like any other business when you start, I didn't have 
the funds to start my business. Therefore, that was my problem. I had the concept, but I didn't have the money to fund it. And the way I came about funding that business, we went to a friend of ours who was living in Alexander 2nd Avenue. We asked him to give us his stock on consignment. He used to sell packages of ties, cufflinks, and pocket square. We went to him, asked him to give us his stock on consignment, and then we added our own um, markup to make profit. And with the proceeds from that business, we started the perfume business. And how we came about the concepts that having lived in Alexander, we realized a big opportunity around consumer lifestyle because Growing up in a township, people liked dressing up, but not everyone had the ability or the privilege of buying expensive premium cologne brands. So we decided to fund a cologne business that is not so expensive. For us, that was an opportunity to really penetrate the, cosu the, co the cosmetic business. And how we raised the funding was very genius because we had to go get stock on consignment of ties, pocket squares, and cufflinks, and we used the proceed to start that business. So the lesson from that is that sometimes you don't necessarily need to have money to start a business. You need to come up with concepts that don't cost you money to fund the business or to generate money. So while I was studying at undergrad PwC, the second year of my studying become accounting sciences, I became the top accounting student of the year. And the very same year, PricewaterhouseCoopers came to our to a bursary scheme, which was Tomorrow Trust, looking for an accounting student to sponsor. And obvious, for that year, I was a top accounting student. For me, that was another opportunity for me to go work for a great firm. When I got to PwC, I was employed in a one-year internship program. And when I got there, I literally learned as much as I can, gave it my best shot, invested in all the projects that were thrown to me. And each and every project was an opportunity. And I maximized that opportunity by building great relations with my senior managers, with my partners, always going over and beyond in my deliverables, in everything else that I did. To a point that the managers that I worked for at PwC really liked this young man with a great attitude, that they decided to give me an opportunity to employ me on a permanent basis. And with that, I got an opportunity to rotate within different business units at PwC, from auditing to asset management to strategy, which gave me so much to learn about. Then, with that being said, because I was always that senior associate that delivered on projects, an opportunity arose for me or came through for me to go work at PwC Middle East in asset management. Then PwC gave me another opportunity to be on a secondment in the Middle East, in Dubai, rotating around the Middle East. And I specialized in asset management, which means more money for me, right? Because my salary was increased four times. I was getting subsistence allowance. And looking at it, that is an opportunity for me to earn money. What did I do with that opportunity? One might ask. Or what did I do with that money? One might ask. I saved it up, all of it. Never changed my lifestyle. Never really spent it on anything, but saved it. And that's how I got to start Batu. I used my five-year savings as seed capital into Batu. And what might, might ask, why Batu? I was a sneakerhead at the time. I used to buy so many sneakers that end of 2015, I had such a valuable collection of sneakers. And there's a saying that says, if you're buying too much of it, then why not own it? What do you see there? Because I see an opportunity. Looked at my valuable collection of sneakers, not even one African sneaker brand. Well, that's an opportunity for me to build a sneaker brand. Because if you're buying too much of it, then why not own it? Conceptualized the business and really worked on the proof of concept for about, 18, for about 18 months. And I was declined 16 times. Mainly because I did not only want to build a sneaker brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with. I wanted to be innovative in my approach. I wanted to build a great product with innovation, with cool factor on it. And our mesh edition, our flagship design, which is the mesh edition, was declined about 16 times, mainly because in footwear manufacturing, Mesh edition is used as a component of a shoe, either on top, on the side, or at the back. But for me, all I knew was that there is an opportunity to build this. In footwear manufacturing, they couldn't see that happening. 16 times. Finally, I got approval from the factory, and we did about 21 samples of our flagship design. Then now, all systems set. I've done a proof of concept about 18 months. 
And it's very important to work on proof of concept. If you're starting a business and you want to sell it to shareholders, you want to get funding for it, it's very important to really prove your mechanics, the mechanics of your model, the technicalities of your model, and really prove that it's viable. If you're going to ask for money from any um, funders, either venture capitalist, public or private equity, you know, it's very important to go to them and prove your model, prove your concept that it's commercially viable. I'm spending so much amount of money on this. I've got so many units going. I already have X amount of clients. I need you to buy into it and scale it because I have already proved to, to you and I've already proved the model that is a profitable model and is commercially viable. Hence, it's very important for one to really maximize and work on your proof of concept because if you can tick all the boxes in your proof of concept, it's easy to scale and grow it. And that's what I did with Batu. Being an accountant, never worked in retail, doesn't understand shoe manufacturing, I had to really work for about 18 months on all the mechanics, on brand building, on influencer marketing, on retail industry in South Africa before I could take my my savings and use them as seed capital in my business. For me, well, I did all of that, forecasting included, and I risked it all. I risked it all to start a shoe brand that Africans can proudly affiliate with. One might listen to this story and think, wow, impressive. But if you think about it, if it wasn't for me taking that opportunity that my dad gave me when he sold his car for me to be in varsity, if I didn't take that opportunity, grabbed it and maximized it, I probably wouldn't have gotten the buzzery. If I got the buzzery and still not continued working hard and maximizing opportunity, I probably wouldn't have gotten to PwC. Yes, maybe if I got to PwC, if I didn't maximize on the internal relations, on the internal opportunities that were given to me by the fam, I probably wouldn't be at PwC Middle East. And even when I got to PwC Middle East, if I used all my uh, subsistence allowance, if I used all my salary in living the Instagram life, living in Dubai, I mean, I'm in the Middle East, I can go anywhere in the world, I can travel every summer if I want to, but I chose not to do that. For me, more money was an opportunity for me to save it so that I can start my own business. Hence today, my message is about maximizing opportunities. And opportunities come in different forms, formally and formally, right? Our perfume business was very informal. I keep on saying that because the way we started, it, we didn't have money to to, to start the business. You know, we were not even compliant at some point. I mean, there one might ask, what happened to the perfume business? It failed, and I'll tell you why it failed. It failed because of when we were running our business, we were running it informally so. In as much as, yes, we were registered, yes, we had a bank account, but we were not compliant. We didn't do our CIPC returns. It's very important, whether it's, high, it's a side hustle, it's a formal business, it's an informal business, it's a three months business, to make sure that you are compliant at all times. CIPC, you know, even if you're not turning any money, it's important to file those returns at zero revenue, or at the loss and send them to SARS, send them to CIPC and make sure that you are compliant. And sometimes you can even take advantage of the fact that you are making loss because of then SARS can pay you for making or for being a loss running business in everything. So those are the things that I never did when I ran my perfume business. However, it was an opportunity for me to really learn the dynamics of starting business. I mean, we're selling all based perfumes. I learned the art of marketing. I learned how to do my cash flow. I learned my forecasting. I learned how to really convince and the art of selling, convincing someone that my all based perfume is, is, is of great quality, like the premium cologne brands. Long story short, you know, I used the opportunities that I've gotten through my career, the opportunity to work for one firm, you know, used it to start a business that provided for so many other families. I often say this, through a series of the opportunities that I've gotten, I've managed to leave one job that provided for me and my family, that has done so many, that has given me so many opportunities, and to start a business that created opportunities and that provided for 220 plus people in our business. Five years later, we've got about 220 people employed in our business. We've got about 24 retail stores. But think about it. Everything else was started by just one opportunity. And I maximized it onto the next opportunity, onto the next opportunities with lessons in between. I had opportunity to go and study and further my studies. Not everyone has that opportunity. Yet, I still decided to create another opportunity for myself by starting a side hustle business, which was a perfume business. And that business taught me so much. So 
what I want to tell you about today is that opportunities are everywhere. You need to identify them formally and formally and maximize and grow from that and scale from that. But let me tell you something. Sometimes opportunities require a lot of and huge amount of sacrifice and compromising. Compromising maybe on friendships, compromising maybe on any other fun activities, or even sometimes your social life. But it's very important to strike a balance. Really know when to strike a balance. Really know when to sacrifice and compromise in when it comes to opportunities. In that way, you will be able to scale, you will be able to create more opportunities and grow from that. So it's very important for one to really work on that. And I want to emphasize on the importance of really doing a POC and moving from the POC phase and going implementation and launch and scaling from that because of once you've done POC, whether at POC level, proof of concept level, you've gotten funding or you've ticked all the boxes, you've now seen that your business is commercially viable. It's very important that when you go on trade, that when you start generating revenue, all the proceeds of your revenue, and you need to spend them on the right avenues of a business, your OPEX care project, your KPEX project, really know when to spend and where to spend your money in the business so that you can be able to scale your business. Let me give you a typical example. The first years of my business, you know, we were training all over South Africa with offers from all the retailers that you can think of. All the hubs in retail wanted us, wanted to have Batu in their retail malls. I said no to that, mainly because I had that opportunity to build, you know, my working capital. I was a high turnover business with minimal cost. And that really helped me scale after year two because with the working capital I've had, I was now ready to go into retail. And when I went into retail, it has afforded me an opportunity to scale and to grow my business model. And we at Batu, we pride ourselves in owning and being the custodians of the end-to-end -end value chain because we believe that at every component of the value chain, we create opportunities. From our warehousing facility, we create opportunities for people to come, pack the shoes and run our warehousing facility. When we buy our own trucks, we create an opportunity for someone to come drive the trucks. When they drive the trucks, they go deliver at our retail stores. When you get to retail stores, most importantly, we create opportunities for people to work at retail stores. But most importantly, we live in an era of data we're creating an opportunity for the business to capture the data of a theobaloy who comes in to buy a party shoe. And that's how we get to own the value chain. But if you think about it, we started in a room in Alex. We didn't have the 24 stores. We didn't have the 3,700 square meter warehouse. However, we had an opportunity to start a business. And then we looked at where we are and we started with nothing. And that is why it's very important that every opportunity that comes your way, being it academic, being it corporate, being an entrepreneur, that you really need to maximize at that opportunity and invest in the right avenues so that that opportunity can grow by leaps and bounds, even more, create more opportunities for you or for your business or for your corporate career. Because if I was that intern at PwC who was who was very choosy about the projects that were coming my way. If I'm, I don't want to do audit projects, if I don't want to do asset management, asset management projects, or I don't want to do strategy projects, that wouldn't have really built my profile within the firm. Because what happens is that when you're in intern and any opportunity comes your way, you build a great profile so that whenever an opportunity comes through or they're doing a moderation at for you, you know, they bring up Theo. People will know that I've worked with them, I've really went over and beyond with the deliverables, and I've, that in turn helps me build my profile to the next opportunity. Because oftentimes in corporate, managers come together to discuss the performance of the junior consultants, even the senior consultants, everyone who works under them as to how are they in terms of delivery. And sometimes delivery is not only about technical skills, it's about the soft skills, how you engage with your managers. Tell you what, I was that guy, before I leave the office, I will always ask my manager, is there anything else that I can do for you? Simple things. Even when I was going out for coffee, we were working in a boardroom with a team of 10. I was that guy, when I stand up going to get coffee, I would ask, if everyone wants coffee. So you build directly and indirectly technical and soft skills in everything else that you do. You really need to understand and maximize on opportunities in everything else that you do because when you build a profile for yourself, in, in even at school, academics, 
even at corporate or even in business. That really helps you build your credentials around your professional brand. And when you've got that profile, right, you can diversify. Or even more opportunities can lean your way because of the profile and the credentials that you've gotten. You know, I mean, throughout my business, I've gotten so many accolades, right? But yet I started in a room in Alex. And those accolades really build the profile that I that I have for my business, or the, it builds the profile for Theo Baloyi and the profile for Batu as to we are a reliable business. And that thing on its own, when you are reliable and you've got great credentials, can bring so many opportunities your way. And when you've got so many opportunities, then you can now diversify, mainly because of you've really built your profile in everything else that you do. And importantly, when you are growing a business, it's very important to know what model, what avenue of a business is working for you and you need to reinvest in that. Because oftentimes, people make the mistake of taking all the proceeds you know, and spending them on avenues that had nothing with building their business. So really do a proper analysis and forecasting on your avenues of business that are generating income and reinvest in those avenues, in everything else that you do. And therefore, you will be able to scale and grow your business in everything else that you do. So today my talk speaks about maximizing opportunities. As youth, you know, you need to be able to unlock your potential. You need to be able to unlock the opportunities in everything that comes your way, formally and informally. Just unlock the potential and unlock the opportunities and maximize, maximize in everything. You truly have to believe in your vision for you to leave the security that comes with employment to pursue entrepreneurial endeavors. I'm truly inspired. Thank you for sharing your journey and that wealth of knowledge. Thank you, Pam. Amazing. So it's time for us to jump straight into the Q&A. Hit us up on the YouthX platform uh, with any questions pertaining to the immaculate talk that Theo just gave or business advice that you may want Theo to give you based on your business. I can see comments in our comment section and I really, really enjoy that you guys have um, been engaging throughout. I have a couple of comments before I jump straight into yep. uh, the questions. His journey is testament to the saying, those who humble themselves will be lifted. Amazing. I think also that speaks to how you were making coffee for everyone else Absolutely. and asking. That, that's, an, that's beautiful. Yeah. I just get up and go make coffee. You know? <laughs> well, I just I, learned something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think growing up, you know, in the township, that's one thing that we always, you mm. know, uh, had. It was embodied in us, either helping out a neighbor mm. or an elderly on the streets. You know, it's always about that, you know, yes. just being inclusive in everything that you do. Mm, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. So another one um, from, okay, Avuile Notada. This is a confirmation of never despise humble beginnings. Amazing. Absolutely. Mm. Theo's story is phenomenal. Amazing. I think we can go back to the questions now. But there's one more comment I saw that I really, really loved. Maximize opportunities and learn from them. I like that. Mm. Amazing. Um, yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. And one more. I'm happy. This is the one. I'm happy you have also spoken about the no's you received because that's where most of us get demotivated and end up not seeing the dream through. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I love that. Okay, so let's go straight into the questions. You guys can keep them coming on the YouthX platform because remember, when you ask a question, you earn points. And if you earn points, you win prizes. So the question reads, in order to start a small business, you need to identify a need and should fulfill this need. You were a sneakerhead, but what the gap, the gap that you saw, uh, you, uh, you identified to pursue a sneaker business. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's read that again. <laughs> let's try that again. Okay, in order to start a small business, right, yeah. you need to identify a need and should fulfill this need. You were a sneakerhead, but what was the gap that you identified to pursue a sneaker 
business? Because there's a lot of sneakers yeah, in the market. Yeah, Why did absolutely. you decide? That's a very good yeah. question. Yeah. I think, you know, before before even that, you know, um, I was a sneaker head myself. Mm. Working in Dubai, um, towards the end of 2015, I had such a very liberal you know, collection of sneakers. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's a saying that says, if you're buying too much of it, then why not own it, yes, right? Yes. So I looked at my available collection and something was missing. An African sneaker brand. I had ah. all these international footwear brands, you know, um, limited editions, but nothing from this continent. Mm. And I love sneakers. Mm. Why not just start, you know, mm. an African sneaker brand? And then that's when I identified the gap. Amazing. And I think what's really notable with that is that you were a sneakerhead yourself created your own brand yeah. and now that brand is becoming a unique African story and a unique sneaker story to 100%. someone else. Yeah. So, you know, I really love that story. So let's go to the next question. What has been the biggest lesson in business and what advice can he give us young lions from Kosinati Zwani? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, great question, Kosinati. I would give uh, advice that, you know, when you're starting a business from your dynamics, you know, from your foundation, mm. never cheat you know, processes. Never cheat the building blocks. It doesn't mm. matter whether, you know, you need it now or not, mm. but try to really, you know, um, put your, the foundation of, a, of your value chain, you know, from like the utmost quality and yeah. doing it the right processes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, never cheat your foundation. So when you're starting your business, always, always make sure that your foundation is well built, uh. you know. Your value chain is well built because if you don't do that, two, three years later when you're going it through... Collapse along the yeah, line. Yeah, when you're going through scaling and growing the business it will collapse because of your foundation was Mm. cheated amazing so do not cheat the foundation okay uh the next question is how did you go about employing your management team from Utlanga Niso Maluleg I think that is a really good question I say that because you have built this baby yes. yourself and yeah. you know the kind of work that went into it. Five years of savings yes. that went into it. It's not easy to just trust, trust just about anyone. Yeah. So how do you go about picking the right people yeah. to work for you in that manner? Langani, so a uh, great question. You know, um, you know, you can always get the right people in the right, in the, in, inside the bus or in the bus, mm. but it's always difficult to put the right people in the right seat mm. in the bus, you know? So I don't think there's a metrics that you can, like, you know, put in place to make sure that you get, you know, the right people at all times. However, you know, we've got a recruitment mantra in our business, you know? There's a saying that says, um, you know, people get hired for skill, but they get fired for attitude. So mm. at the core of our business and our mission speaks about, you know, uh, creating sustainable jobs and reigniting yeah. home. So we always try to employ either being management, being entry level uh, employees. We always try to employ, you know, looking at or trying to align with our mission, you know, uh, from a person. So we look for character more than any other thing. And in terms of my management uh, team, it was a very, I think, tough process, you know, because mm. we had to hire some people, fire some people until I got the right management mm. team, which I've got now, you know, but it went on. They, uh, it went on an experience, you know, that I had with the people. Uh, I started working with some of my management team on ad hoc uh, basis, basis, you know, yeah. um, and just giving them short term employment and certain project before I took them on board full time. Mm. That's how I went about it. Oh, I love it. So you yeah. don't just go and hire Malume or friends yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. It's based on skills. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Okay, amazing. So the next question is, when building a brand in the clothing industry, what is the most important thing with growing it and how do you go about uh, reaching greater crowds like celebrities to advertising it for you? So, and I think you mentioned in your presentation that uh, in the first couple of months, I think you said two months, yes. you had... Uh, influencers, you ha- you had a strategy. Yeah. For I think I think most important, you had a plan. Yeah. 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 So how do you then reach those people? Because how do you get a hold of so yeah. easy? You know? yeah, how do yeah. you get a hold of all these influencers who will advocate for your brand? Yeah. So when when I started the business, and you can imagine, I'm just an accountant. I know nothing about retail mm. or clothing, you know, uh, or anything like that. So what I then did was that just to empower myself, I did about 18 months of research and mm. development. And one of the things that I 
I did um, research on was marketing, and this was 2015. So influencer marketing was the thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And remember, I'm I'm from Alex. I used to sell perfumes door to door. Yes. Literally, I thought about influencer marketing, which was a cool thing to do, but ca came at the price. Mm -hmm. So I I did what I knew best was to hustle, you know, my influencers. Yeah, uh, and I went on to hustle, you know, um, Sumizi, you know, yeah. with um, you know, with my brand. To say, hey, Sumizi, this is my vision. This is my brand. This is my product, and this is what I want to do. This was at the SABC studios. But going to, um, you know, building a brand is that I would advise that, you know, oftentimes people build a clothing brand and they want to do everything. You know, they mm. want to do socks, they want to do shirts, they want to do hoodies, they want to do all of this. Mm. Just, you know, choose one, you know, product uh, offering and maximize on it and build a brand around that, you know. And um, then expand and expand the later a later stage. Oh, yeah, expand okay. in the later stage. That always helps a great deal in terms of building your brand credibility, building your brand equity. Because, mm. you know, when people can trust you with a shoe, they can trust you with a jacket, mm. a sweater, you know. But when you've got so many, people don't get mm. to really experience what mm. your brand is about, you know. So one product offering gives your audience an opportunity to experience what you're about, from your brand promise, your quality, to your offering, to your product. So that's ah. the advice that I would get, you know. And influencer marketing is the thing, you know. It really, really works. But you really need to understand what form of influencer marketing works, you know. Mm. Do I just get your product and post about it? Do I get to, you know, advocate for your brand, mm. you know, and really get to know what works for your brand, you know. And always do those reviews. I gave Theo a shoe to uh, advocate or to post on social media. What were the outcomes? What were the insights? Did I just grow my following only, or did I just grow my following with, you know, my revenue as yeah, well? You know, so yeah. always do that uh, analysis in terms of you know your insights and 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 yeah outcomes out of uh, influencer marketing. I think it's imperative to do the analysis because yeah. I think a lot of brands just want to give out product mm -hmm. and not know whether this influencer is, there's an ROI with using Absolutely. this influencer. Absolutely. Amazing. That's really important. So this next question is from Ulebo Khang Lamini. What inspired your brand name, Batu? You uh, could have labeled it with a fancy name, but yeah. instead chose Batu, which uh, gives it a sense of African originality. 100%. Very good question, Luhan, there. I, I think for me, when I did 18 months of research and development, you know, I realized one thing about us as Africans. Africa alone is known to be a, co a continent that is filled with so much heritage, mm. a different ways of speaking, a different ways of eating, you know. I mean, look down at South Africa, a rainbow nation, our rainbow nation dream, mm. right? But what are we doing in terms of embodying the rainbow nation and talking about that, you know, our diversity, mm. you know, and that unity that we always talk about. So we're not doing much as African entrepreneurs to embody that into ecosystems, into value chains, into product offerings or service offerings yes. that the rest of the world can receive. Yes. The word Batu means shoe in South African townships, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter whether you're in Gugule to Alex, Tembisa, or whether you speak Zulu to Ana on Debele. Ipatu, Ipatu, But what are we doing to tell the world yes. about this story? It puts us together. Yes. So that's what inspired me to, you know, conceptualize my sneaker brand, to build a business out of it and tell, you know, um, the world about this beautiful untold South African story. Ipa to yeah. yeah. It, uh, and Ipa to is not a just any shoe. It's yeah. a stylish shoe. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Ipa. Hey, Ipa Ipa Yo, tell me <laughs> <tiyaku shu. laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So uh, the next question reads, what were your inspirations that led you to be where you are right now? Shoe a lot. Um, uh, no, well, that's a great, mm. great question as well. But I mean, obviously, um, you know, I'm born and bred in, um, you know, in Pretoria. Later moved to a rural area called uh, Parke, you know, outside Hamaskral. Came to Johannesburg, lived in Alex, you know. Mm. So I think what inspired me was uh, basically uh, my background most of the time, you know. Mm. I mean, even when I started IPA to uh, being an accountant, always visiting Alex, I could see that there's so much injustices mm. there's uh, a lot of people that are unemployed and oftentimes when you talk to people you realize that it's not everyone who've gotten the opportunities that some of us ha mm. have gotten to study to work for a great firm to go work overseas you know yes. and no one is doing anything about it people are so quick to uh, put the blame and say people are lazy and mm. so forth or put the blame on the government so for me I just wanted to do something you know for my community mm. or let alone where I was living in Alex you know just to employ two three more people and to work together little did I know that this thing our brand will grow you know the way it has grown to you know 24 stores to 220 people but what inspired me was you know obviously the african context mm. um my community in alex at the time you know just trying to impact or create that mm. impact and change you know in my community you know yeah. uh, and i just got to work
Yeah. yeah. So essentially unlocking potential for more than just yourself, 100%. but for everyone around you as 100%. well. I love that. So the last one comes from Kosinati Zwane. How important is financial literacy for the operations of a business? This question is from Ungosinati yet yeah. again. Kosinati, I see you <laughs> firing <laughs> questions. I see you trying to earn points. We love that. Kosinati is firing. Great one, Kosinati. <laughs> um, I think I was actually having this chat of offset uh, with Mamwendi that you know financial literacy is very important because um, you know you get to you get to understand the dynamics of finance they say money is a game right mm. so people you need to play the money game mm. and I think oftentimes people don't look at money as a resource mm. and you need to play the game you know yeah. and the, play, the game can be played in many ways some people cheat the game of money yes. some people really do the right thing mm. so for me financial literacy was very important in building my business because even when I was promoted and I got a secondment opportunity to work in Dubai mm. my salary I was increased four times mm. you know, tax free salary mm. I never changed my lifestyle you know, mm. I, I was telling my Wendy now that I drove, you know, uh, the same car for seven years, even though mm. I was earning four times more. Mm. And even when I started my business, um, for the first two years, I was a high turnover business with minimal cost. Nothing changed. Mm. And that helped me build a, a healthy working capital. And that afforded me an opportunity to expand my business later, even when COVID hit, mainly because of in the good days, yeah. I, I was a good business, saving my money. So even when COVID came, I had enough working capital. We never returned anyone in COVID. Even when no one was working, we paid 100% salaries, you know? Mm. So if I did not do what I did in the good yes. days, I would have probably fired people or yeah. not really fired, but, you know... Yeah. Um, you know, having to, to uh, let go of people uh, yeah, and absolutely them, yes. absolutely or retrench people right mm. so i think it's a very important financial literacy in your personal life you know um and in your business because it helps you you know uh, grow um in spite of the economic conditions mm. yeah. amazing i think uh we're going back to that point you made about making sure you don't cheat the foundation sure yes you don't cheat the foundation i have someone here lucky matumi who says that I have a pest control business. Please hit me up. <laughs> you definitely will need my services very soon. Sure. So, Lucky, we see you plugging yourself in. Remember, there is a competition where you can actually enter whatever talent or business idea that you have, and you might score a ticket to the summit. So, save that for that as well. But I'll definitely give your name to Theo because Theo needs you to come through. Okay? Okay? <laughs> so, it's time um, for us to let go of this uh, Q&A session it was nothing for a uh, short of informative thank you so thank much you. and i can't wait to see batu reaching new heights because i feel like almost every two months if i'm not mistaken there's a, a batu store opening or an activation and it's truly exciting to see such an african thank story you. and thank you so much and i can't wait to see what you'll be doing with netbank youth x in the next couple of months as well absolutely we've got a few more deliverables coming out yes. very excited about it very passionate about youth x really? and the youth so stay tuned you know okay i can't coming. wait for my batu x netbank youth x sneaker hey, Just saying, hint 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 hint, hint. 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 Nudge, nudge. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for joining you, us. Appreciate Thank you. it. <laughs> So it is time for you to put your money where your mouth is. Open a NetBank Unlock.me account today with these simple and easy steps. Click on the hamburger menu on the top left of your screen. Select Open an Unlock.me account. If you are mobile, scroll to the bottom of the page and select Open a bank account or bundle. Insert your age and follow the steps and you will be ready to go with your Unlock.me account. If you are on desktop, click on the Open uh, an Unlock.me account. Click on Apply on the top right of your screen. Click on Bank and then Accounts and a bundled offering and then Show Me All Accounts. Scroll down to your Unlock.me account uh, and then start your application and you're ready to see money differently. Remember to keep interacting on the YouthX platform because it earns you points, whether you're uploading a profile picture, asking a question, or even voting on a poll. You earn points, which will win you awesome prizes, uh, courtesy of NetBank YouthX and Unlock.me partners. And these are the partners. Fashion Fusion, Dukes, Sphinx, and Bidvest Waltons. Yes. 
So last month's Money Talk was nothing short of informative and today's Money Talk will certainly live up to that standard. Today we're joined by Nedbank's Head of Segment Design and Development, Ulans Vuma, who will be equipping you with all the tools uh, on how to get your hustle on and take your business to the ultimate next level. If you are still waiting on a sign that today is a good day to start your business, then Simply Biz might be that sign. And you're probably wondering what is Simply Biz? Biz, I got you, or rather, someone's got you. Remember to ask questions throughout the talk, and I will attend to them during our Q&A sessions. So before I hand over to Lance, I would like to welcome Nedbank Head of Financial Education, Ms. Wendy Silebi. Good afternoon. Well, well, well. What a powerful masterclass by Theo. I'm certainly inspired and I hope you too are inspired to start a side hustle. We wanted to just bring in all the people that didn't make the first masterclass up to date so that you are not lost at where we are going with this financial series. In the first masterclass, we really spoke around discovering your purpose, discovering your why. We spoke about how it's important for you to see your money differently. And um, we also asked you to tell us what are your pain points, what are the topics you'd like us to address. And I must say you kept them coming. And that's why today we will be talking about sized hustles. But I think just for those who were not with us last month, we also spoke about the importance of savings, the importance of investing. And I think Theo unlocked your thinking this afternoon to say that, you know, we don't get successful because of microwave. Uh, you put something in the microwave for three minutes and then you are a billionaire. You start small. You start as an informal trader. You grow your business into small and then you develop it into a big business. And we are saying we will partner with you throughout that life journey. We are here as money experts who do good to make sure that you begin to see your money differently. And so I'm super excited this afternoon to introduce the second Money Talk host, which will be Lance. We'd like to welcome Lance. Mamwendi, thank you so much for having me today. It's my privilege to really speak to our audience this morning. The question that we have at hand is, what can you do in 9.58 seconds? Can you make a cup of tea? Can you perhaps send an email or talk to a friend? Maybe send a WhatsApp? Well, let's take a look at what other people can do in 9.58 seconds. Did you hear the commentator there? 9.58 seconds. Yes, that was the same bolt breaking the world record. And besides the aspect that Hussein Bolt had talent, he practiced. There were some other fundamental aspects that were part of his run. He had a blazing start with reaction times between 0 0.58 seconds and 0 0.16 of a second. I mean, I can't even start comprehending that number. But that was what broke the record. But when we take a look and study his race, experts call what he put, what he had in the line of attack, where his ankle, his knee, his hip, his shoulder were all in one straight line, as you can see in this image. 
the force and the energy were all moving in one direction. One of the other aspects that he used or, te or techniques was he had a maximum stretch where he had that over his opponent. And the last aspect was his flat foot that enabled him to take a shorter route and as a result, get ahead of his competitor. I'm sure you would agree with me that looking at all of these components, that yes, there's practice, yes, there's technique, yes, there's talent, but I'm sure you can agree with me that it is absolutely fundamental that you get on the right foot. So are you starting your side hustle on the right foot? It is estimated that one in three employed South Africans have a side hustle or a side business. And most of these entrepreneurs are young professionals like yourselves. So you might be asking yourself, why you? Well, take a look at these or listen to these following headlines. You're a digital native. You are the most disruptive generation. You're a vanguard of social change. These are just three headlines that describe, yeah, the youth. So let's just take a, or double click on the digital native. What does that mean? Well, being a digital native means that you've grown up with social media all around you. You know exactly what to expect from social media. Nobody's teaching you how to click on Facebook, how to click on Instagram, how to click on YouTube. You've got all of that at your fingertips. The second headline, you are the most disruptive generation. The youth unemployment stats are dismal. But this also means that you know how to hustle. You know how to make money where there are no jobs. And you know how to get ahead. You're a vanguard for social change. You've grown up where there is you, climate, cli climate issues, where there's issues, social issues, where there's income and expenditure issues, and you've made it work. So as a result of that, you are well fitted for to start a side hustle. And so looking at those headlines again, you're a digital native, you're the most disruptive generation, you're a vanguard for social change. Yeah, that's me. But now, you might be asking yourself, why a side hustle? A side hustle will broaden your outlook in life and enhance your skill sets. It allows you to track or tackle things beyond your current job or your studies. You might be answering calls the whole day, or maybe working on worksheets or spreadsheets. But now, with a side hustle, it keeps you going through the lull of life and gets you to do things differently and be excited. The second thing, full-time employment is a farce. And haven't we seen that? With COVID, we've seen that full-time employment can just change at the clicks. In fact, we can no longer be secure as we were before. And many people might be saying, ah, but we know as a reality that things change overnight. And as a result, you don't want to be putting all of your eggs in one basket, but rather you want to have varied streams of income. A side hustle must make you money. Yes, show me the money. A side hustle must make you money, or else it's just a hassle. But how do you get this plan going and getting and how do you get it on the right foot? Well, many of us, maybe like myself, we need to stop procrastinating. And why do people procrastinate? It may be because they're fearful of taking that jump. You may want to get something perfect before you take that step. But it is key that if you want to start your side hustle, hustle not hassle, <laughs> side hustle, <laughs> if you want to start it, that you do what? You stop procrastinating. And you also want to get organized. Because when you organize your thoughts, when you organize your vision, you will know exactly where you want to be. And keep in mind that there's never that perfect time to start. Rather, you want to start now. Because 
once you start it, you can innovate, you can refine, and therefore you can get more clients that, that's, that, that can help you. You also want to see the need. Most new businesses are not rocket sciences, are not rocket science, which means that it's a need, a day-to-day -day need that sits with your family and with your friends. So ask yourself, what is this need that I can help with? And once you see that need, and once you can enhance it, you can then get to the next step. One of the key aspects is that you want to separate your personal finance from your business finance. So start with the end in mind, because once you've got the split in your own mind, you'll be able to take the next steps. And it will help your clients to take your business seriously, because now you'll be saying, this is what my business is. And this is my personal income that is on the side as well. Third, lastly, you'll be able also to see your business income and your personal expenditure and make a distinguish between these two aspects so that you can see whether you are making a profit or whether you're making a loss. Fifth, you want to dream big but focus small. So rather than focusing on making that first million, focus on the way that you can make that first client. Because once you've got that first client, they can give you feedback. And then you can get that second client. And then you can get that third client. And once you've got that going, you can go to the 10th client and to the 100th client. And what is key is side hustles are fun. They're exciting. But what you, wanna, you don't want to forget is that you want to make sure that you're constantly crushing your full-time job. So focus on being efficient as possible, getting as much done as possible, so that you don't, so that you don't have the question to say, Mom Wendy, why haven't you delivered on that deadline? Why haven't you done X, Y, and Z? And having people questioning your performance. Rather, your goal should be, in the short run, how do I get my side hustle 100% and how do I also focus on getting crushing my job each time? Lastly, you want to get your hustle on. Talk to people. Talk to people. Talk to people. Don't be the best kept secret. Set up your business on social media. Say what you do and do what you say. Then get your friends, your family, your community to rally around you and to rate you. And really, some important aspects about this is looking at some examples that we have on the screen. We've got heck, people that are doing haircuts as side hustle. We've got people that are washing cars. We've got people that are doing nails. We've got people that are creating or making quotas. We've got people that are making food. And all of these are different forms of side hustles. So once again, it doesn't have to be this huge idea Rather, it can be something that you can do immediately. And what is key in all of this is that you need to keep your chin up. You've got to roll with the punches. Having a side hustle is not easy. But keeping your chin up and rolling with the, with the punches will definitely help you. But you may be asking yourself, what can NetBank help me with? What can they help me with in order to start my side hustle or to run my side hustle. So one of the key things in a side hustle and your personal expenditure might be mixing these two together. In the beginning, we spoke about separating these two views. But we understand well that in the beginning, you might not be able to do this immediately. And you might be far, far down the line of doing this. And you might have what we call scrambled eggs in your account. Yes, scrambled eggs where your personal income, your side hustle income, your stock file income, all come into a single account. How do you start differentiating these views? Well, with Money Tracker, you'll be able to create different dashboards, and these dashboards will be able to separate your income and show you income that came through for your personal, in your personal capacity, in your side hustle capacity, in your business capacity, and even in your stock file capacity. Because why? We understand you as a side hustle.
One of the key things is also understanding when do you need to formalize your business. So with NetBank, we're able to help you into formalizing your business. And many small businesses come to us and say, you know, we not, Lance, we're not really sure how do I register my business with the CIPC? Do I need to go onto this website? Do I need to go around the corner where they said to me that I can register my business for 600 Rand or for 1,000 Rand? Do I need to go there? Well, with the CIPC integration that we have, you can go onto our website and for 175 Rand, no commission charges, for 175 Rand, you can register your business directly with the CIPC all available on the NetBank website. Another tool that we have is Simply Biz, where it provides small business owners and side hustles with access to tools, information, and a network of experts, where you can talk to other small business owners. You can talk to other side hustlers, as it were, and other entrepreneurs, and actually, curate ideas and bounce off ideas that you have so that you can get guidance on maybe problems that you have within your business. And one of the key things is, and that I'm excited about is that, that getting fund, funding pillar where we provide you with a pitch book and funding ideas and also crowdfunding initiatives that you can go into in order to get you ready for your financing that you have. Lastly, we have the essential guide. An essential guide that helps you to think about when do I get an accountant into my business? Am I ready to formalize my business? When do I need to get a tax expert, expert into my business? All of these are available on this essential guide and have been curated for, e for ease of use for you as a small business owner and a side hustle or should we say a person that's wanting to start, start your side hustle. So I leave you with this question. Are you starting your side hustle on the right foot? Thank you so much. NetBank certainly knows how to pick them. You make financial advice sound so practical and it's not some taboo concept, right? I really love that. I really enjoyed that. And um, you do make people like me see money differently. And that's really important, you know? Definitely. I didn't know I had scr scrambled eggs. <laughs> Who else did not know they had scrambled eggs? <laughs> I need to do better. I need to do better. We want to jump into the questions. Uh, but before we do that, there's a comment here that says, uh, from Avuile Notata, the Usain Bolt story is such an eye-opener. I have never looked at it that way. Great. That's amazing. That's amazing. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, let's read the questions um, and see what you guys are asking. What skills do I need to start a side hustle? Do you need any skills? Well, that's a very that's a very good question, mm. Pam. And and you know when you're looking at a side a side, a side hustle and starting a side hustle, one of the key things is that you need to look at your skills as an individual. What are you good at? Mm. If there are certain things that you are good at, use that to your advantage mm. and make sure that you get you're able to use that in order to, side, to start your side hustle because mm. you, you almost want to have an advantage. You, you don't want to do something that you regret. Mm. You want to do something that you're really good at. Mm. Look at your skill set. Look at um, what people are always talking about and saying, Pam, you know, you know really, you're really good at this. Mm. Use that as a foundation in order to start your side hustle or to see that opportunity that you need. Oh, amazing. So you don't have to look too far. You know, and Definitely. obviously if you want to upskill yourself in something before starting a side hustle, that's also an option, right? Definitely. Oh, Definitely. amazing. Amazing. So when using the money tracker, is it best for me to use my personal account for my small business or should I open a separate business account to manage my finances when I start? That's a fantastic yeah, question as well. Fantastic, yeah. So as, as, as we mentioned in, in, in the insert is that it's, it's really key that you separate 
your business and your personal spend. Mm. And as NetBank, we've got our startup bundle that really helps you with that. To say, mm. open up a business account and we will give you six months free banking that we have on there, where we have a relationship banker that can assist you as well in terms of getting your business off the ground. Mm. So that is the, the ultimate uh, option where you can say, oh, um, I have my business account, I have my personal account, and in that particular way, you separated the two. However, if there is an instance where you still have just the personal account that is on there, yeah. you can put money track on top of this view and create those uh, those separate ah. views that are on there. So it's different options that you yes. that, that you definitely have. And you know, because it's our business to understand your business, we we've created those those different um, personas or views that you can have over there. Okay, amazing. I really love that. Okay, so you basically can use the money tracker over your own existing account. 100%. And another thing I heard, you said six months free banking. Yes. How amazing is that? Because I can only imagine in the first six months of your business, you're still scrabbling for capital. You still do not know what you're doing. And NetBank is out here saying, we can give you six months free banking 100 percent. that is pack. brilliant if that is not motivation for you guys to start that side hustle and start banking and seeing money differently i don't know what is okay <laughs> so the next question is how do i know if a business idea is going to prof be profitable sure that is and, and that is a very tough one because mm. you know um, when we look at the failure rates of small businesses, mm. there's a high failure rate that is on there. So I don't think there's an absence of, of, of good ideas that mm. are sitting out there. But what one needs to do is that look at that need. So start off from a point of view that make sure that you are solving for a need. Yes. Once you make sure that you are solving for that need and you perhaps get your first client, they can give you that feedback and you can pivot from there. Because mm. it's not, you're not going to get it right exactly that first time. Yes. And as Theo was talking about earlier, you know, you almost need that minimal viable product or the POC. Mm. Once you've got that minimal viable product, you can tell whether, sure, do these people really like my gotas or not? Yes. Do they really like what I'm offering? And once you got that, you can tell just, whether the business idea is going to be profitable expanding. or not. 100%. Oh, I, I really love this idea of starting with one product. I'm learning uh, something as well because if you go ahead and just create everything, country people don't even like the spot you're exactly, in. Exactly. They don't even like Focus. that area. So yes, yeah. no matter how many products you, you're make, making, they just won't buy from you. 100%. Now you're stuck then. with stock. So, okay, okay, makes sense. So, the next question is, how do I register for Simply Biz? This person was like, actually, you know what? I'm sold, therefore, we want to sign up. How do I sign up? Fantastic. So, you can go onto the Simply Biz website, simplybiz.co.za, and you can put in your details that are um, on there, and it will give you all of that content that I was talking about earlier. Okay. Um, we're really excited about Simply Biz. Um, there's ultimate pillars or more pillars that are, that are, that are coming through, and it really is there to help small businesses and to help entrepreneurs to guide them through the journey of um, beyond banking or uh, through through opening and running their business. Yeah. So like I said, this is to this whole initiative by NetBank uh, Youth X is to aid youth unemployment because it's really hectic out there, especially now with the pandemic. So I really appreciate things like uh, Simply Biz and obviously this Youth X event in, 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 uh, as Fantastic. a whole, you know. So uh, the next question is, I know Simply Biz will assist me with this, but I, would I need to register my business immediately or only when I start making money? Great question. Yeah. So on Simply Biz, you can do, you can go in at any time. So mm -hmm. you can go on, get the content and get get everything that is on there. You don't have to be a registered business in order to um, ah. start reaping the wonderful information that that sits on on, on Simply Biz. And one of, and when you are ready. That's where we, we spoke about that CIPC integration that we do have. Yeah. When you're ready, you go onto the NetBank website, you're able to register your business. So all of this is, is that business, is NetBank understands your, your business and understands your life stages. Yes. So while you're doing the research, you can go onto Simply Biz mm -hmm. and you can look at the ex essential guide. Um, mm -hmm. When you're ready to register your business, you can go onto the website. And as Theo had also mentioned there, yes. you don't want to be taking shortcuts. So as a result, you'll be able to go onto the NetBank website, uh, register your business on, uh, on, uh, with, with CIPC, mm -hmm. 175 Rand, and there we, you've got your your, your registered business Amazing. so really making this journey as easy as possible for entrepreneurs and side hustlers out there amazing 
two things. I appreciate that you can actually get access to Sim- Simply Biz before you even register your business. Perhaps that's that motivation you need in exactly, order for you exactly. to officially register your company. Number two, I am so glad that you outlined this company registration thing because a lot of people will come to you and be like, I can open a business account for you for 600 bucks or like a young 700 bucks. That's all you need. I want 1,000 Rand. And then we all go, systems go. I'm so glad you clarified that. You heard that, guys. It's 175 to register your company. So you do not have to wait to have 500 Rand. Thank you so much, Lance. Thank that you was so much, really ben. informative. Thank you. Can't wait for the next one. Definitely. Cool. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the leaderboard. It's looking really tense, if you ask me. It's looking really tense. Uh, let's click on the leaderboard. Okay, there it is. Okay, okay. Lots of wings. Okay, lots of wings is leading uh, at first place. Lucky Matome at 106 points. Uh, I've been seeing you ask questions quite a lot. Girl, that's how you've been earning all these points. Amazing. Guys, please do keep voting, asking questions, and interacting with each other on the YouthX platform because you might walk away with really awesome prizes. So if you want to know, uh, find out more about YouthX, visit the unlock.me website on www.unlock.me.co.za. YouthX can be found under the potential pillar you have access to blogs vlogs and you can find out about upcoming youth x live events as well the website is catered to you and you can select a category that is relevant to your passion as well we have six categories in total and they are arts and entertainment business and finance fi- uh, fashion rather and beauty social good and sustainability, sports and wellness, and tech and innovation. We will be opening the YouthX Awards between June and July where you can submit your entry and win prizes to unlock your money, potential, and lifestyle. A bank that is committed to creating a platform for the youth to have constructive conversations about business, money and opportunities that lead to sustainable growth during these unprecedented times is definitely the content that I signed up for. Introducing the Power Panel, our change maker for business and finance, Theo Baloy. Nedbank's Head of Segment, Design and Development, Lance Vuma. Our local change maker and the rose amongst the thorns, uh, Sivu Mabena, who is the founder of <laughs> Duma Collective. And finally, our panel facilitator, Ayabonga Tawe. The stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Pam, and welcome to you all uh, to our power panel. And uh, certainly have a very high powered panel uh, this uh, afternoon and a real pleasure to have uh, all of these uh, very influential and uh, insightful people with us. Uh, good afternoon to you all. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Theo, I'm going to start off with you. Yeah. Uh, you, were, you were on here earlier on, sure. uh, really recounting your journey and uh, some of what contributed to that. We've seen some of your stores really, I guess, you know, we can liken them to stampedes outside of your stores, <laughs> large queues. Yeah. Um, you spoke about the journey earlier on, um, but when did you start to see the dial switching somewhat? When, when did you start to see that Actually, we're onto something here, and uh, this is a bit bigger than just, uh, I guess, you know, an operation just in Alex. Yeah, I think uh, just right after we launched our, you know, proof of concept. I mean, when we did proof of concept, we started off with about a hundred pairs, right? Mm. And obviously, we sold that just amongst friends and my close network. And when we launched the brand, we launched with four hundred pairs, you know. Um, just after that, you know, and then we went on to the thousands and thousands and thousands. Then I knew that we onto something, you know. And that's when I thought about, look, man. At the time, we we're very informal, you know, informal. Mm 
are running the business. It's like I started thinking about how do I actually put a structure in place that is going to be able to accommodate and facilitate all of this growth, you know? Mm. Yeah. Did somebody force you to, to pay 800 rand to register as well? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, was, I was quite smart. So I, I, I often like to, <laughs> I, I want to do things myself. So I actually sure. went straight to CIPC and paid, okay. I think at the time it was just under 150 or something sure, like that, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sibu, similar journey for you and uh, Duma Collective. Uh, you, you've been able to bring together some of your key passions. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm quite interested. I mean, we often tell young people, don't follow your passions. Follow yeah. your money, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and where you might have a high likelihood of making money. But but you've been able to bring together these passions um, into a Duma Collective. Talk to us about the genesis of uh, of your business and some of the things that you faced. So I must say I've been very fortunate to be able to profit off of my passions. Mm -hmm. um, some of those being dancing, social media. I love people. Um, I'm always engaging with different people in different spaces. So artists. Um, marketing managers and I think I got to a place where the people I knew wanted to know each other so I found a way to connect the dots um, and create properties out of my network mm. um, to be able to make money and monetize those things so some of the things I did as a teenager was I was a dance coach okay. um, and as a dance coach I'm engaging with people's parents people's parents who are in corporate spaces and at a time when I got to varsity I think and I started working on projects that I needed funding for I was able to tap into that mm. network because hey my mother spun money remember me <laughs> I was your child's <laughs> dance teacher sure. um, I also was a bartender at the Sands for some time mm. and at the Sands I was engaging with brand managers um, who I was working with on their social media campaigns for the events they were throwing at the Sands. Mm. So just as a bartender, I extended myself beyond my call of duty sure. so I could be able to learn in a space where at the time, Twitter wasn't a really big thing. Mm. Facebook was the one leading. And I said, let me be at the forefront of this thing, this new wave. And I started teaching myself early on how to, you know, um, use the tricks uh, to get objectives mm. uh, achieved. And I grew in that space. But whilst sure. I was doing the bartending thing, um, I was doing choreography. Whilst I was doing choreography, I was also working on events. Mm -hmm. So I did a lot of different things as a, um, as a way to learn. And I offered my sure. services for free at the time so I could bag experience and mm -hmm. have a network of people. And now I've taken all of that stuff I was doing as a freelancer sure. and converted it into a really professional operation, mm -hmm. um, which is now Duma Collective with 30 yeah. people doing the mm -hmm. same thing. Theo was speaking earlier on about not cheating the process mm. uh, of really building your systems, building that team, uh, which really ensures that you're able to, to do the work that you're doing and it doesn't only fall on you. Yeah. What is your experience of that? I won't lie. It's taken me a very long time <laughs> to professionalize what was a really high level freelancing operation, sure. I can call it. Um, and these are things we don't know. You know, you, you, you're a creative first, a mm. business person later sure and i think what what this kind of platform helps with is access to that information mm. to say these are the basics of running a business sure. you've got to have some kind of financial management system you've got to have some kind of hr processes we mm. were discussing that earlier and he was advising me to say get yourself an experienced hr practitioner to come in and help you um put systems in place because you're now growing as a team what was true with three people mm. is no longer true with 30 people sure. um and and financial advice from people who know what they're doing because i'm a creative mm. give me a, a problem and i'll give you a creative solution now tell me about ledgers income statements <laughs> child <laughs> violence i still yeah. don't understand yeah. that but i think there are enough tools and access to information out there on the internet and a, a, a platform as simple as you think you know um you can go and access this information mm. If I knew this five years ago, I think I wouldn't have made some of the mistakes sure. I did. So as you grow, ask sure. um, and be hungry for information so that you better yourself mm. as a business because the, the business world that we function in doesn't have time for people to sure. not know. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And people often say, be a sponge, you know, be able to absorb all of those lessons from yeah. uh, wherever those lessons are coming from. And I guess, Theo, that, that's, that's the thing with the, the change maker journey that you are on. Um, Absolutely. You're really trying to speak to Cebu a few yeah. years ago when Cebu was trying uh, to set up a business that now employs a lot of people. Um, what becomes your responsibility then, really sharing, I guess, insights from your own yeah. journey 
uh, for many of the people who are watching this. 100%. Look, man, I mean, I get a lot of, you know, requests on all my social media platforms, mm. you know, either people who are, you know, young professionals, you know, just got in a graduate program, yeah. you know, people just, you know, want to uh, leave their, you know, corporate gig into entrepreneurship, people who are in business, or even people that are literally like hustlers, you know, that are, Lance now was talking about side hustle, mm. that have a side hustle going on, you know, uh, and they ask me about, you know, uh, how do you go about it? So I think for me, I'm just an advocate for that, you know, just mm. to impart my journey. You know, I'm mean, studying, I used to sell perfumes when I was in Alex sure. my undergrad, you know, so I can speak to a student, you know, mm. who's studying to watch something, mm. but they've got a side hustle, you know. Mm. I mean, I worked for a great firm that took me overseas. I can talk to a person who's in corporate now, you know, sure. uh, for sure. two years or, or so. And, you know, I left my job, you know, I can speak to someone who, you know, is in corporate, they're thinking about, you know, going into business mm. and so forth. And not only that, I can also speak to an entrepreneur who just got a great thing going on. They just don't not sure about how do I scale it. Mm. So my responsibility in YouthX is basically to be an advocate for that, to engage, mm. you know, on this platform. And not only that, but to also learn, you know. I mean, Sibu just said very important lessons now. And you know, we've got other, you know, change makers sure. that I can learn from as well. And, you know, the guys from NetBank as well, Langs, Mam, when they are here, to also leverage off that, you know. Mm. So basically, you know, we need this kind of platform sure. to really impart the knowledge. So mine here is to just impart knowledge, to engage, mm. and then to obviously try to help make sure that we build a better South Africa and most mm. importantly, a better entrepreneurial landscape. Sure, sure. And I guess to reduce the school fees for many of the prospective entrepreneurs yeah, that are watching this, yeah, right? Because yeah. when you were selling those perfumes, yeah. you were learning certain lessons there. That was your sweat equity. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, uh, uh, buying those fees uh, and to learn some of some Paid of a hefty price know. for that, my big school fees then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the University of Entrepreneurship. Indeed, yeah. indeed, indeed. Yeah. And Lance, I, I guess, you know, with uh, what Sibu was mentioning, you know, this, this diversity and breadth of experiences uh, is probably the experience of many of the people who are watching this now, uh, who are saying, you know, I'm selling perfumes, you know, I'm, se I'm selling all manner of other things. I'm part of a, you know, uh, maybe a marketing platform where I'm also getting involved there, learning a wide array of skills. Uh, and then you guys come on board with the YouthX to make sure that at least here's another platform where you can learn, but also uh, do what you were mentioning earlier, separate your own personal financial life from the financial life of the business. Definitely. And through the, the various platforms that, that, that we do have, um, including YouthX, mm -hmm. including um, Simply Biz, and what we're looking to do there and is really to empower the youth. Because now is the opportunity that, that, that we have right now. And who better to learn this from? Is it better to learn it from somebody else, you know, on, that, you, that you, don't, you don't know, as it were, or is not in your uh, mm. age group? Who better to learn it from than from Theo and Spoo, the people that have actually looked at um, and experienced these things? Mm, yeah. You know, sold perfume. I feel like I could go sell perfume now <laughs> at the car train station. <laughs> Getting that part of you the <laughs> So, uh, you know, these platforms are really created to say, to say let, let us get the knowledge that, is, that, that sits within mm. these entrepreneurs that have made it. Yeah. yeah. Lots of the choice of really, I guess, segmenting the resources. So there's the business and finance. Uh, there are those who are in fashion and sustainability and in different spaces. What is the thinking behind that? Definitely. I, I think, you know, when we look at youth today, they multifaceted. Mm. You know, it's not a, a person is not one dimensional way. They can only think of one thing. And it draws back to that point there that Mum Wendy was talking about earlier, where to say side hustles. We no longer just have to have one job mm. and only one income. There is, you, you want to have multiple avenues of, of income, but you want to use your talents. You want to sure. use all of those talents, being whether you're a dance, uh, what is it, dance fundi? Dance coach, <laughs> choreographer, <laughs> you want to use that sure, with social sure. media, you know, bring that collection all together so that you can make a business and have multiple in, uh, um, income streams. Mm. And that, that really talks to the different um, parameters that, sure. that, that, we, that we've set up. As a generation, a lot of people say we're digital natives, mobile first. Um, and Sibu, a big part of what you have done mm. is to deploy some of those tools yeah. Yeah. Um, to effectively grow your business and grow the impact and the footprint of your business. Talk, talk to us about some of the key lessons you've learnt, learnt in that journey that are mm. able at least to help many of the people who are logged on uh, to this discussion and are thinking about how they use their own platforms and their network around them to be able to at least catapult them into business. You know, I've met some of the coolest people on social media. Um, I think I've 
I, there are people who I, I I knew on social media long before I got an opportunity to engage with them mm. in real life, and I still had meaningful engagements with them. Things that have converted into business. Sure. Um, so I think what we have to see social media as is a a digital world, as it is called. Mm. And a world in the real sense of it being in real life, sure. but from the comfort of wherever you are in the palm of your hand. So I think uh, uh, what traditionally was so difficult to access in terms of people mm. or an opportunity or a learning environment, you're now able to do on your phone. So I believe there are very little excuses yes. for us to not succeed as young people. Any idea that we have, there's something available on the internet to make that idea happen. Mm. Anyone who wants to learn how to develop an app, you go onto YouTube. Sure. How to develop an app, you find the information there. You want to learn how to code, you find it there. Mm. You want to learn how to stitch something, you find it there. Heck, you want to learn how to bake banana bread. Go onto Instagram, there are thousands mm. of people who have recipes. Yeah. So using your digital platforms to generate an income out of the things you love to sure. do has never been easier. Using the digital platforms to access information has never been easier. By virtue of the fact that so many people are tuned into this event, right. um, mm. without mm. us having to accommodate 250 people only sure. at an F&B stadium because of COVID regulations, is testament to the fact mm. that anything can happen just from the palm of your hands. Yeah. Sibu, I've gone on, watch the tutorial um, on how to do makeup. I now know I'm an ace at doing makeup, but I still work for Simu. <laughs> and we're talking about this outside, which yes, is, you know, um, many of us started our own businesses um, while in the employ of other people, sorry, mm -hmm. former bosses. Um, <laughs> but, but you were saying there's also, I guess, a downside to that and uh, big question marks around commitment mm -hmm. um, as a starting point and also a place where you can gain the experience that you need before you go out on your own. You know, my dad said something very important to me the other day that he would encourage his employees to work for the business as if they were entrepreneurs themselves mm. so that they can learn enough skills in the entrepreneurial mindset to be able to go out and start their own businesses. So I'm very um, pro exploration. I'm very pro um kind of getting to know all the different skill sets that you have outside of the nine to five that you sure. do. So if you know you're good at makeup, do that. If you're a good DJ, mm. do it. Just don't let it affect the nine to five. Yeah. You've got to prioritize that which you've committed yourself to doing mm. because the person who employs you has done so in exchange for your commitment and um, dedication to sure, the cause. Sure. Because one day when you become a boss, you're going to you're hope that the, the people same. you employ yeah, exactly. are going to do the same thing. So as much as the side hustle is necessary, the side hustle really fosters mm. um, creativity and being, you know, I think living a fuller life, remember where your bread is buttered. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Theo, the journey can be lonely. Yeah. Um, and in some cases, you might like to think that everybody you employ in your business has the same vision yeah. for your business or divisions of your business. Yeah. Uh, as you do. Uh, and sadly, that's not always the case. Not entirely. You know, and that's something that I've learned, you know, uh, quite early in my business mm. that, you know, the reality of the situation is, you know, um, you know, not everyone is you and, and people can't be you mm. because remember, you know, people don't feel the passion that you're feeling, that you're feeling inside sure. you. Mm. People don't feel the same amount of, um, you know, uh, vision, you know, that mm. you carry, you know, uh, in you. And they're so, also not getting calls from suppliers. Exactly. Yeah. So sometimes I think as leaders, we also need to, you know, um, sort of accommodate where people are coming from mm. and the people that we've employed, you know, uh, in a sense that, you know, um, they, they, they don't carry the same way that we carry. So even when we engage with them, you know, we need to engage with them at their weight, sure. you know what I mean? Not at our weight, mm -hmm. you know, because yeah. they won't get it. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to do that. But at the same, with the same breath, you know, uh, like Sibu said, you know, if you are employed to do this, you know, sure. do it at you know your utmost quality. And then even better if you can have that mindset of being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you know, um, in someone's business, you know, because the day you do decide that you want to go on that journey, sure. you know, you already have that mindset yeah. going on, you know. So I think it's 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 sort of a dual responsibility between mm -hmm. you know leaders, entrepreneurs, and the people that you know, um, the work for yeah. you as well. Yeah. You know, Lance, I'm, I'm a big fan of side hustles. Sure. Um, and, uh, and I often, I guess, tend to overstate and become overly optimistic about what people can do with their side hustles. When do you know that, you know what, actually, I tried, <laughs> but I, it's not working. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. You know, that, that's, a, that's a little bit of a difficult one. Um, others would say, um, there's a payback period that you, like, you know, uh, and, and <laughs> 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 hey. wow. <laughs> well, and 
Oh, in, in, in my reading of, 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 of this, um, Nick Harry, who, who writes a lot about um, side hustles, mm. mentioned that you know, when you're starting your side hustle, what you want to do is from the onset, sure. you want to set what are the goals that you want to mm. or the achievements that you want to have, mm. and then what are the points of failures that will tell you that enough is enough. Mm. So not while we're busy running and we're busy you know, running everything. Start from the onset to say, okay, if I get to this point and I have not made it by this time, then I need to let it go. Just as your personal goal. There we go. Mm. That's it. That's it. And this can, it can be spread not even fina only mm. financially. It can even be as simple as when I start spending time mm. that is supposed to be spent on my family mm. and now I'm spending it on my business yeah. and they complain then that might be the point, point, point that, 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 that you stop. So it's, it's, it's really from the onset, mm. try and set those guardrails. Sure. And once you uh, pass those guardrails, then you, you're able to mm. reevaluate or sure. recheck yourself. We're in the COVID moment, Lance, and a lot of people during the hard lockdown had decided to creatively start side hustles, do all manner of things. Some people were writing books, doing all manner of things. Um, I'm interested to hear from you. I mean, banks probably know more about our businesses than some of us do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Give us a sense. I mean, micro and small businesses during the COVID moment. Some of your reflections as a bank, uh, especially businesses that are run by young people. What have some of your experiences been? Definitely. So, I mean, COVID was a challenge for all of us mm. and, it has, and it has really changed um, a, a whole way of, do, of, do, of doing business. But within, doing, within that, it has also created opportunities. Mm. Opportunities that now we are, in ab we are able to connect digitally. Sure. Opportunities where um, now Uber Eats and all of, uh, you've got all these bikes that are delivering food. That was not necessarily an, an industry that was booming at that time. But mm. now there are brand new industries or gainers that have come through. Sure. And what that does is that it has created new opportunities. And what is the nice thing and uh, what has really been, been uh, common is that that energy that has come from entrepreneurs mm. to say, I have a vision and I want to grow my business. That has remained, mm -hmm. yeah. irrespective of whether sure, there was COVID sure. or not. Yeah. That has been the constant factor that is on there. And that is where we here as an organization and as a bank to help you grow mm -hmm. to the next level, mm -hmm. giving you those tools that you have there, giving you that education that you have on there so that you can reach and you can sift mm -hmm. out or uh, go through sure. COVID as well. I wish I could chill with you guys. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's a real pity that we have. Such a <laughs> well, no, I mean like, you know, for the whole day kind of thing. You know? and, maybe, and maybe Theo, you, know, you change makers need to make a plan. Right? Um, but, but, but I think you make a very important point. Um, and in the two industries you're part of, Theo and, uh, and Cebu, I'm quite interested to hear what you've seen changing fundamentally due to COVID-19. And that might have some lessons for us here. And the reason why I say this is, you know, we're sitting here now, we could potentially be doing this in a conference hall or even uh, better yet in a stadium yeah. if things weren't the way that they are. Yeah. What has it meant for your business, uh, Asibu Duma Collective? You know, it's funny you ask because I'm sitting next to someone who allowed us to like champion a really crazy idea, but it was a crazy sure. and um, effective and correct idea for the time that we were living mm. in. When they were launching the Batu Time Somizi shoe, mm. Um, the, the challenge was how do we do this in a COVID friendly way, but in a way that will still be effective to market and announce the shoe to enough people to know that it exists beyond just so easy social media platforms and a drive through experience was created. And out of that experience, I think we all realized that guys, it seems impossible until it's done. Mm. Right. And, um, in the eventing industry, a lot has changed fundamentally. Sure. How we uh, engage consumers, how we now start to model our budgets against a, a smaller audience in real life, mm -hmm. but having this challenge of reaching hundreds of thousands of people now sure. digitally. So how do you create talkability around what you're doing? It's so much harder now mm. to do than it was before. Yeah. Before you go to FNB Stadium, throw a party, 90,000 people, now Fill you up. have 90,000. <laughs> <laughs> Fill, <up>. Fill it <laughs> up. And now 90,000 people are talking about Casper and his music and sure, loving him. Sure. And that grows, that, that talkability <laughs> spreads. Now millions of people at the touch of a button are able to know what's happening. Mm. How do you now do that with 100 people 
in a, in a smaller room or 50 people. Or, so I think in the eventing space, things have changed sure. monumentally. Theo, you've been filling up warehouses, filling up retail, <laughs> yeah. filling up malls near yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I what think, has changed, right? I think for me, uh, uh, it, I would say this, um, COVID was a blessing in disguise sure. in a sense that, you know, the narrative has moved, you know, because people, clients are now, you know, brand conscious, yeah. you know, uh, localization has been a big thing in COVID, you mm. know, consuming local has been a big thing in, in, sure. in South Africa, probably South African, you know, has been in you know, a big thing in South mm. Africa mm. that worked to my advantage because of now people, when they go and spend their money, they start asking questions as to, you know, how is this impacting mm you know my community our economy you know and all of that you know which has worked towards my advantage number two also you know it has given me an opportunity to optimize you know uh, my e-commerce end mm. to end you know uh, because before bc before COVID, you know i used to <laughs> oh, <yes. Okay. laughs> i used to be you know more I, I invested a lot of my you know working capital in you know obviously brand equity and yeah. the retail stores brick and mortar and all of that but when the president announced you know um lockdown level five you know, my retail stores were closed. That gave me an opportunity to press a reset button and reinvest in my e-commerce, you know, model and really make sure that I optimize that, you know, which has really helped my you know, grow my business as well. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Lance, maybe just the last one uh, on your end. Um, and, and it has to do, I guess, with many of the people who are watching this now, sure. have registered their businesses, um, are hoping to be a Theo, a Cebu, or even more. Yeah. Um, you know, what's in it for them in the YouthX platform? Well, def w the different uh, aspects that we, that we do have on there is really understanding the different life stages that you, that you have. So whether it's the startup business accounts sure. that you have, whether it's helping you register, whether it's information about your business, mm. all of that information has been curated and packaged for, for, for you. And on the YouthX platform, there's many more influencers that are gonna come through and many more uh, entrepreneurs and um, different facets that sure. are gonna be talking to, um, that are gonna be spoken about. So really, we understand or we're looking to understand the youth and we understand your business mm. and as a result we are here to partner with you and please take that opportunity awesome stuff lance theo sibu thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, theo i'll wait um, in the mail i guess for the invite to the next chill session so sure <laughs> thank you very much and a uh, big thank you pam uh, for hosting us uh, today and uh, yeah would encourage all of you to go and check out the youthx platform and uh, uh, go in to make you best use of all of those resources. And as we said, uh, let's try and absorb as much of that knowledge as we can. Amazing. Remember their names. I know we said power panel, but what a power panel. Do make sure you shoot your questions in the comment section and let's engage these uh, dynamic individuals. I have a question here popping up from uh, Olirato Malinga, who says, Will you relaunch the Cologne business considering you have learned so much? <laughs> Theo, I would assume that is definitely for you. Yeah, 100%. Actually, I've been thinking about it for the longest of time, you know, because we, that was a very um, lucrative business. What are you going to call that one? Hey, watch out. <laughs> watch out. <laughs> fa, fa. Fa, fa. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a very, I think, lucrative business. It just yeah. that at the time, obviously, we fell to really scale it and corporatize it sure. but yeah not anytime soon uh, my <laughs> <laughs> my focus is on party now sure. and that's what uh, i'm doing yeah awesome amazing the next question goes out to lance COVID 19 has affected a lot of small businesses or side hustles and some people might be reluctant to take that step in pursuing their dreams what would you say uh, to encourage these young people do it. <laughs> yeah, so as we, as, as we spo spoke earlier, it, COVID has definitely dampened a lot of things, but has created opportunities. Mm. So look out for those opportunities. And we, we spoke about earlier about now is the time to act. You don't want to become perfect. You don't want to get perfect at something, but rather mm. create that small thing that are there, uh, or meet that small need that is on there. Once you've created that small need, you'll be able to get your MVP and POC. So really, those, those items that we've spoken about this morning, take it to heart. You, you are in right fit. You're at the right place right now. You have got the knowledge at, the finger, at your fingertips. So why not? Mm. Amazing. 
So Sibu, this one goes out to you from Refente Sebeng. Sibu, please advise how can one effectively use Instagram to grow their business? Oh, okay. Amazing question. I think Instagram is such a beautiful platform. Um, it is a visual platform. So whatever you're doing, um, showcase it. This is where you're able to take images, you're taking videos, um, you can engage with people. One, I think learning, you're able to connect to people in your industry and what they do and people you can learn from. A lot of people are doing Instagram lives. Tune in and whilst you're on, comment and whilst you're commenting go and follow because people actually take notice of what people are saying in the comment section i've learned i actually did that i engaged with a guy who works at TikTok in america and now we're friends on instagram and talking in the dms so don't be afraid to slide into the dms for work <laughs> um i think secondly for work. So that's from a, a learning and a networking perspective. Secondly, showcasing, um, use hashtags. Also go into people's, don't spam people, don't do that, but go onto the people you are targeting and go and see how you can communicate with them on this platform called Instagram. I think thirdly, package your content package your content in such a way that it is attractive to the people that you're trying to sell to because people um people are attracted by things that are beautiful people are attracted by things that they they can aspire to so pay particular attention to how you package your business and what you're trying to tell your audience thank you so much and the next question goes out to theo how important is it to have a mentor who uh, and how does one initiate the conversation of mentorship I think it's very important to have a mentor, uh, but not for, you know, uh, all the vanity and social mm. media just to show that you're chilling with who and who, you know? Mm. It happens a lot. We see it a lot. People just vibes. want to... Mm. Yeah, for the vibes. Yeah. You know, I hope you're not asking us for the vibes <laughs> so that you can take a snap. Eh? <laughs> but anyway, um, I think it's very important because you get to um, really leverage off and um, from their knowledge and tap mm. into their knowledge. And when you do that, oftentimes it allows you to be a step ahead of your peers, yeah. you know, to understand whatever industry they're into, you know, a bit more better. I mean, when I was an accountant, I had a mentor, you know, who worked for a different, you know, obviously bank, you know, mm. and it helped me a lot. By the time I got to PwC, there was a lot of things that I was understanding, you know, sure. beyond other graduates, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's very important because they are having a mentorship uh, relationship allows you to tap into a world that you wouldn't have gotten, you know, easier. You had to wait for a certain time frame sure. in your career to tap into that world. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, I want to be a broadcaster and I can talk about the world of broadcasting with, you know, Ayabonga, mm -hmm. you know, I already understand before even I get my own show or get oh. to work for mm -hmm. any radio station, sure. you know, I already know, you know, how broadcasting goes like, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's really, really important but how did you get your mentor uh through like i was the top accounting student at my buzzer be attractive to mentors yeah stand out yeah stand out yeah. 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 stand yeah. out and then yeah. this guy just came through and said hey i want to mentor one uh, accounting student and they're like hey we've got the best student for you sure you're Baloi. but also he yeah. had his priorities in order yeah. Yeah. yes you're a student yes you might be doing all of your other side hustles yeah but pass your books. Yes. Yes. And, and yeah, and I guess yeah. that's that yeah. that was the priority in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. The next question goes out to Lance. Earlier on, you mentioned that a side hustle must make you money. After how long or at what point should you stop investing in a side hustle if you see no money coming in? I think uh, Aya Monga <laughs> asked this question. At De what point do you say, uh-uh? Yeah. That's a very interesting question, though. De De definitely. And, and we're so persistent. That's, yeah. that, that's it. And, and it, because a side hustle comes from your passion, it comes from mm. your heart. You know, you you want to start continuing and continuing and continuing until, you know, there might be a point where everything has burnt around you. But what is key, and and we spoke about it earlier, is really having those guardrails mm -hmm. in place. So think about it from the onset and not later on in the in in, in the process. That amazing. Yeah. The next question goes out to Sibu. What are some of the misconceptions that young people have about owning a business that you can correct today? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. Um, a number of them. Yeah. One, that the business's money is your money. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> the money that is in your business bank account belongs to the business mm -hmm. and it should be used to better the business, not for you to go and buy a car, buy a house, buy mm -hmm. this, that and the other. You've still got to function as an employee in your business because if you can take on that, um, that thinking that you've got to plan like an employee, you've got to budget like an employee mm -hmm. does, even though you're the business owner, you're not just going to spend the money that's in the account. Sure. One, two. Do not spend the money before the job is done. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm. You never know what fires Mm. may come up. That your client has paid your deposit and you think, okay, no, I've spent, let's say it's 10 rand. I've spent five rand on the job. The other five rand is mine. And then something happens. Mm. The kitchen bombs. And you need that five rand to complete the job so you can get the other 10 rand. But now you've gone and spent it on a trip Mm. to Mauritius because, wow, I'm paid. Um, Three, it's not easy. Just because it's something you love to do, it doesn't make it easy. For running a business off of your passion is as hard as running a business, period. Um, I think what the biggest lesson I've learned is as a creative, I can do all the creative stuff, but I still mm-hmm. have to do the stuff that it takes to run a business. Mm-hmm. HR, legal, finance, all the compliance I, stuff. I, I have to have mm-hmm. a, a company certificate. Mm-hmm. I have to have tax. I have to have my tax compliance. Mm-hmm. Um, for me to be able to engage in business so I can do the creative stuff. So I think a lot of these lessons I learned the hard way, um, but I'm grateful to be here now and I can still continue on into the future mm. running a business the right way. Yeah, sure. That's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> the next question goes out to Theo, but I would also like uh, Sibu to chip in on this one because it's about mm. the business of social media as well. How do you handle unhappy clients if you have any, especially Ooh. in the digital era and social media where the clients <laughs> jump uh, customer service and go blast a brand for something on social it's media and mm. could have been resolved on uh, email or via a phone call? Ooh, yeah. Trend, yeah. No, yeah, customer. <laughs> customer. I think for me, when it comes to that, you know, um, I've, I've, I think our business have gone through that many, many times, and we've managed to resolve it and learn from it and build from it, you know. Um, but I've, I think, you know, as a business, you need to be able to be, you know, customer centric, you know, um, and be able to just focus all your energies and all your resources into building a great customer experience, mm. you know? And sometimes a great customer experience can come from, you know, a bad customer service because mm. if I fail to deliver a shoe on time, you obviously, you know, um, attack me for it, mm. but then I can create a beautiful experience mm. when I make it up to you, you mm. know what I mean? So there's no right way or, or, or bad way of, or good way of doing it, but I would advise that, you know, businesses try to be more customer centric, you know, mm. and also try to understand where customers are coming from, you know? Uh, because this thing of, yeah, we still a small business you know Mm-mm. please forgive us you know <laughs> this is not happening just take it all in yeah. and be more customer centric and try mm. to you know better the experiences you know you won't get them all right you know they will they will come when they come mm-hmm. but don't take it personal you know try to understand where the customer is coming from and better your customer experience yeah. and i think in the service business um your client is king at the end of the day without a client willing to pay for your service um there is no business mm, yeah. so where a client complains about work, you acknowledge that complaint and you do your best to see what contribution you made to that problem because sometimes it's not just you. Sometimes the client did play a role in things not working out. But acknowledge your contribution to the problem and then find ways to remedy it because if you don't come to the party to say, I'm sorry that this happened, here's how we're going to fix it, Mm. then your client has absolutely no reason to spend their money on you again because everybody is spending money at the end of the day, whether hard-earned, whether a budget allocated, people are responsible for this money Mm. that is being spent on your business and your service, and you have to treat it as if it were your own money being spent on something that you are buying. Yeah. Amazing. The next question goes out to Theo and Siwe again. How do you turn a vision into action? This one comes from Harry Mboya. Yo, Harry, um, I think on my end, I would say that, you know, um, uh, there's no metrics to do that. But however, in my end, what I did was that, you know, uh, when I started my business, I started with an end picture in mind, you know, and worked, you know, backwards, you Mm -hmm. know. Uh, So you have this end picture that you want to achieve or this vision that you want to achieve. And then you just, you know, put your head down and work. You know, every day when I started from that room in LX, when I moved to my 1,000 square meter warehouse, when I employed 10 people, when I employed my third store, you know, before I know it, I was just in the work, you know, um, just focus on the work all the time and just get your head down and do the work. But remember, you have that end picture before you know it it's a complete new vision you know that you've or a new vision and and in business that you've built you know so just have the end picture in mind and work you know um backwards i was the actual opposite here eh? yeah i don't have an end picture and um i think my journey's been an obsession with achievement mm. i just wanted to achieve tomorrow's thing yeah. and then after nice. achieving that i'm like okay cool on to the next achieve yeah. the next thing and with one achievement after the other um 
safe to say I've done a lot of great things and then as a collective we've done a lot of great sure. things mm. and I just am so hungry to keep that feeling going mm. so it's an obsession with achievement um, versus knowing exactly where I'm going and because I think we are different as people yeah, yeah. there are some people who are planners mm. and then there are others who take opportunities and run with them yeah. so mine was to take opportunities as they came and then that generated even more opportunity so it's it's an obsession with doing great work an obsession with um delivering well an obsession with being happy with the work that we do and that's what has bred more work so that's how i've turned my vision into nice. an actual business amazing wow. For Lance, uh, investing in something I've been strongly interested in, but don't really know what profitable ventures to look into or invest in. Do you have any advice? This one is from Refint. Hmm. These hmm. are some good hmm. questions. Yeah, yeah. Very good question. <laughs> hey, the audience, well, I'm gonna look to you as well because you're the guys that have got the ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, ide ideas sits sits every, every, everywhere. Mm. So and really looking for. That need, as as we as we are talking about, it's 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 not necessarily the, the rocket science that comes that that comes from from it. It's not a rocket science idea that that you ha that um, needs to be in place in order for you to um, you know start start doing some, something. You can look at a gap that you can see in the market. Once you see that gap, see what is the first step that you can do to get there. Invest in that by one researching on uh, that that industry and what is the need that, that that is around there. Two, making sure that once you've got that or you've researched enough that you are able to put that POC in. So I think it's really really about about that. Just getting getting that need and then mo moving on that. Um, any ideas, guys? Uh, no, I'll okay, pass. before you move sorry, on, what's POC? Sorry. You just spoke. <laughs> oh, sorry, 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 POC. <laughs> concept. Proof of concept. <laughs> <laughs> and Theo was talking about it earlier. So really, that's that small proof of concept where you just say, all right, would this idea work in this market? And mm. once you've got that proof of concept and somebody says, oh, I actually like this, mm. then you can, you, you, you can take it from, from there. Mm. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the, the big um, misconceptions are that everybody wants what we're selling. You know, just because, mm, just because yeah. you like it, yeah. you'll think everybody will like it. So now, Uting Sama perfume, because you like perfume, but now there are seven other people selling perfumes. Mm. Now you're all chasing Saturation. the same one mamzo mm. to buy your perfumes, you know? So you have to test the market. You have to see that there are people willing to pay for what you're offering. So, um, in, in, at, and the inverse of that is if you've got money that you want to invest mm. in other businesses, consider the same metrics for those businesses. Yeah. If you're looking at a tech company, are people actually buying into what these people are selling? Mm. If you want to invest in a Makwinya operation, La Makwinya Bawateng is a Bawateng is a group. It's called any, but schools are closed. What is the point? Mm. Tech Xerox, okay, they're still operating. That makes sense. So now we're mm. like, so, it's, so it's about balancing mm. like the cold, hard analysis of the market, of the numbers, of the feasibility of the thing, yeah. and aligning that to your interest. So, so don't lead just with your interest yeah. uh, because you might run the risk of losing a lot of money. Mm. Amazing. So the next question uh, is based on so many comments that we're receiving. People are asking about mentorship opportunities, <laughs> collaboration, and so on and so forth. So the question is, are you guys open to doing anything of that sort? Do we email? Do we DM by Instagram? Or you guys will definitely let us know when those opportunities open up. I think on my end. <laughs> Shoot your shot. <laughs> Shoot your shot on DM, you never know. Uh, on DM, you never know. But uh, obviously through this uh, platform, there's many other developers that are going to allow us to uh, run mentorship uh, programs to engage with you guys. Um, and yeah, look forward to that. Stay mm -hmm. tuned. And then there's many more um, that are coming up. Uh, on my personal capacity, we're also doing something in the business that we will try to accommodate you know, all of those requests uh, for mentorship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I personally share a lot of information around what I'm doing on my mm -hmm. social media, and I think I'm, very, I'm as responsive as possible to people who do ask questions. Um, some people send DMs on Twitter, and I'll respond, or they send an email to our info at dumacollective.com address. Um, other than that, I think I also believe what is for you won't miss you. Mm. So if I'm meant to see your proposal, I will. <laughs> um, don't, don't get despondent. Don't give up because we are busy people. We are 
also trying to run operations that are beyond us and bigger than us. So um, keep trying. Don't get tired of people not responding to you. And it's not just for us. Anybody else that you would like to find as a mentor um, or aspire to. And if they don't respond to you, just continue following the journey because there's a reason you believe in what they're doing. And it's because of how they document it. And you wouldn't have seen that info if they weren't documenting. So follow, um, watch, and I think approach and if you get met with a positive response great mm -hmm. and if you don't keep following and watching mm -hmm. yeah a massive thank you to all our panelists from our facilitator, Ayabonga Kawe, Ulans Vuma from NetBank, Theo Baloy, our change maker, and of course our local change maker, Usiwu Mabena. That was absolutely informative, and we cannot wait to see what the future holds for every one of you on this panel. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot express how much I enjoyed today's session and I wish we had more time. But as my people would say, which translates to all good things come to an end. But do not despair. Next month's Youth X Live event will be just as informative. I hope the wealth of knowledge that was shared here today got you thinking about your why and how you can start seeing money differently. So before we officially leave you to our media guests, please be on the lookout for the breakaway room link that will pop up on your screen uh, in a couple of minutes. And that is how, ladies and gentlemen, we officially wrap things up. Thank you for joining today's Youth X Live event. My name is Pamela Mtanga, and you have been a great audience. Remember to see money differently with NetBank. <laughs>